that was the reason that I didn't upload a video last week because that little bitty wood chip off that bowling pin took out that really nice camera. And that camera was not only my best slow motion capture device, but it was also my uh, cell phone and my uh, source out to my, uh, my path out through text messages. And it was also, most importantly, my connection to the outside world. That's how I actually have internet connection is through the hotspot on that phone. And so when the phone went down, all of that went down and I was not able to either finish the video nor was I able to upload it. And, um, and so here we are a week later, but I've taken that time to get a new phone. And number two, I've also gotten a permanent um, internet connection device up at the house so I no longer depend on, on a cell phone for internet connection. And I've also picked up a second cell phone. And so I have, I've done something I should have done a long time ago, and that is I've really doubled down on, uh, on redundancy. And so, what's today's video going to be about? It's going to be about the Chiapa. Chiapa. 1886 Ridge Runner model. Really nice 4570 that belongs to my friend Kevin. And uh, Kevin loaned me this a long time ago, and I'm uh, just now getting around to making a video with it. But it's a really cool package. I'm going to give you a close up look here in just a minute. But right now, I want to step right up there and we're going to shoot some steel and we're going to get this guy, we're going to light this guy up and uh, get it warmed up for the rest of what we've got in store down here, which is some reactive targets. I've got a couple of trick things that may or may not work. We'll try. And, uh, and then at the end of the video, we're going to have a patriotic display of red, white, and blue. You're really going to want to see that in the practice run. It was really impressive. So I hope you'll stick around. It's not going to be a long one today, and it's not going to be a heavyweight. So um, let's go one ringy dingy, two ringy dingies right up here. Okay, let's see if I can actually ring that steel. I think I want to take that while that slow mo's playing. I want to take this muzzle brake off, load another round, and um, compare the recoil. So let's see what that looks like. Now let's get back up to the house and learn some more about this Chiapa Ridge Runner 4570. Well, old habits are hard to break, but if you have any doubt in your mind, then all you have to do is check, click on this link right here to the Adventure Cowboy, and he interviewed Mr. Reno Chiapa, and he'll straighten you out on how to pronounce this Chiapa Firearms. There it is. And this is the Ridge Runner model. And let me give you guys and girls a close up look here as we fly over. You can see that beautiful muzzle brake. And by the way, I don't think that muzzle brake had a big impact on recoil with those fairly moderate cowboy loads. But there's that fiber optic front sight, the Weaver rail with Skinner Peep on it. Beautiful, if you're into it, brushed chrome finish and rubber-coated wood furniture. So it feels pretty hefty. It's about 7.8 pounds, and um, and uh, it <laughs> and so it feels like a real 1886. And let me show you, by the way, it is a takedown model, and you can tell because there's some extra beef across here. And we've got this device right here. So let me just take it down for you. 
we're just going to break that uh, thread loose and then unscrew this a little bit and then we just twist it apart it's really oh I got to open the uh, bolt and we just twist it apart just like that and the interrupted threads you can see there's not the threads don't go all the way around this stub of the barrel right here. That's called interrupted threads. And that's what allows you to twist it off and pull, and pull it out. And so the beauty of the takedown model, some people think of it as a smaller package to transport. I think of it as an easier rifle to clean because you can access the chamber without having to go through the receiver. And so for cleaning the bore, it's really easy. And it is a, a Winchester 1886, but it's quite a bit different than the, than the Moroku Winchester 1886 that uh, I did a, a video showing how to fully disassemble and clean. It is a little bit different. It has a leaf spring and some other smaller differences on the inside. But there it is, the Chiapa Ridge Runner it's still Kiapa. 18 and a half inch barrel, 7.8 pounds, holds three in the tube, one in the chamber, and uh, a nice package. I want to thank my friend Kevin for uh, loaning this to me, and it was a lot of fun to shoot. Now, let's get back to I better screw this back in before I get forget. Let's get back to the rest of the video and um, see what that guy has in store. Well, I hope you enjoyed that close-up look at the at the Chiapa 1886 Ridge Runner. It's really a nice rifle, and um, you know, and if there's enough interest, you guys let me know. I will do a um, a, a takedown or a, a, a disassembly video for cleaning purposes of this of this rifle because it is even though it's an 1886 it's quite a bit different than the Winchester 1886 that I've already posted a video about and so let's get loaded up and uh, we're going to shoot some uh, reactive targets here and these again are the HSM cowboy loads 405 grain lead bullets was a miss. Let's try again. Okay, what I've got here, I'm going to shoot one round here at this steel target. And I've got these cans right here, 
and these cans right here and that can right there are lined up with the plane, the face of that target. And my thought is, when I splatter a bullet on that steel target, it's going to pop all of these cans. Now I've got my new cell phone back here. Hopefully I'm out of harm's way. Actually, I'm going to get a little bit further back out of harm's way. And we'll see if we can pop all three of those, I mean all five of those cans, with one shot. Well, unfortunately, I didn't turn on the slow-mo, but you got a little bit of slowed down motion, but you can see what I really wanted to show was that that the um, sideways splatter off of a steel target can really be dangerous. And so uh, I'm going to do one other. Um, and so anyway, you got to be really careful about what you put on either side of a steel target. And in fact, I lost a cell phone uh, a few months ago back up at the range I was shooting my 22 and I had finished shooting at some reactive targets I think it was some fruit and I left my cell phone down there and uh, then the next thing I shot was a spinner a spinner target and uh, one of the bullets off of that spinner splattered laterally and um, and shattered the, the uh, screen of my cell phone and so I've had kind of rough luck with cell phones and it's my fault for uh, putting them in harm's way. But anyway, I just wanted you guys to see what um, firsthand what the uh, splatter is capable of here. Now I'm going to do um, I'm going to do one other thing real quick and that is we are going to uh, shoot a, um, a can of hominy and uh, I've constrained that can in a way that I hope I'm going to get more vertical lift out of that hominy than horizontal explosion. And so let me get set up and we'll shoot that can of hominy and then we're going to do our red, white, and blue patriotic ending to this, to this video. So I hope you're still with me. Okay, the idea is to constrain the explosive force into a vertical component. And I'm going to try to aim right there. And we'll see if we can't get most of that hominy to go that way. And this is the one serious and scientific part of the video. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, by the way, I'm going to be shooting this with the Lehigh Defense 380 grain wide flat nose solid copper bullet. And we're going to try to make it through all three of those water jugs filled with patriotic colors. And if we're really lucky, we might actually keep going straight and hit that gong right there. We'll see. That's a pretty long shot. But, uh, but, uh, Let's give it a try.
Well, that was a pretty patri patriotic display. And, uh, and if you guys and girls haven't already, I'd encourage you to please hit subscribe and then click on that little bell and YouTube says you'll get notified every time I upload a new video, usually on Tuesday. And hopefully we've taken care of some problems that'll keep us from, from missing a Tuesday like we did last week. And, um, and if you guys are of the mind and would like to, and to support me on Patreon, there is a link in the description below. And uh, I'm very thankful for all of my Patreon supporters uh, my patrons that uh, enable, that help enable the content that I provide here on, on YouTube. And so I want to say a special thanks to my patrons as well. And uh, you know what, guys and girls? I'll see you in the next video.